First of all, just tell us who you are and where we are. My name's Rachel, I'm the Principal Nurse Manager of Alfreton and today we are at the Vets Now ECC Bite Size Roadshow at Sheffield. Fantastic, there's a ton of CPD on offer but later on this afternoon you're talking about rabbits. Um, we're all really interested to hear what you've got to talk about but um, what in their particular would clinicians really need to be looking out for in treating rabbits and what are some of the more common uh, presentations you'll see? So rabbits are now widely accepted as the third most popular pet in the UK so knowing about them is really important. It's quite easy to consider them as small cats and dogs, which they're not. They are very different. They have a very different anatomy and physiology, and they are actually a prey species, so they often hide their illnesses. So quite often, if we get a phone call about a poorly rabbit, they're a lot more poorly than what you'd ever realise, so we'd always advise them to come down to clinic sooner rather than later. Some of the more common presentations that we get into clinic for our rabbits, most common one I would say is gut stasis. So when they um, have stopped eating, usually there's signs of lethargy, inappetence, reduced faecal output, that's quite often what the owner notices first. So when they come down into the clinic, we've got a few considerations to take into account there, mainly whether it's medical or surgical to whether we need to, uh, how to address this, this gut stasis. If it's a medical one, quite often we need to put them on some fluids, we need to reheat them and try and find an underlying cause as to why they're not eating. Dental disease is a common reason as to why they won't be eating. Our rabbits have continuously growing teeth. And if they do overgrow, if they're on an inappropriate diet, if they are fed too much pellet food versus the hay that they should be getting, their teeth can overgrow and cause them some pain and discomfort and then they're not wanting to eat. So it's important at that point that we support them. We get starting with their syringe feeding, some assisted feeding, and we actually put them under anaesthetic and address their teething issue. If it's a surgical case, they can get blockages, so the food can actually become pelleted in their abdomen. Um, it can often get mixed with hair, and then it can't pass through the small intestines. They are true surgical emergencies, um, and it's quite common now that we actually start running bloods on our rabbits, which is something that we didn't used to do very many years ago. We do find if a rabbit has a blood glucose of over 20 millimoles per litre, it's likely that it's going to be a surgical candidate. At that point, if we do need to take them to surgery, you don't necessarily need to do a full enterotomy like you do with your cats and your dogs that have eaten the ball that they shouldn't have eaten. Quite often you can actually milk the obstruction through the intestine and then put it into the large intestine where it will pass quite naturally. Just makes the anaesthetic that little bit safer and the post-op care just a little bit easier for them. So there's a lot of stuff and uh, we were talking earlier about chubby rabbits. That's quite a problem as we say. They, they might look cute but that's a serious problem isn't it? Yes unfortunately. So diets in rabbits it's, it's becoming more of a popular topic of discussion. It used to be that a rabbit would be fed a bowl of pellets every day. But what we need to realise as a profession is that rabbit pellets actually came around for farming rabbits when they were farmed for their meat and for their fur. So they were then encouraged to gain weight very, very quickly. So they are high calorie, highly dense nutrients that in a normal rabbit, we don't want that. We don't want them to be overweight because they can actually have a whole wealth of health issues every time that we have a fat rabbit. Uh, so what we want to be doing is encouraging our rabbits to be eating predominantly hay, a small amount of greenage and then a very, very small amount of pellets. Only 5% of their, pe their diet should be in a pellet form. Okay, so it's very interesting. So clinicians across the country when presented with a rabbit, they've got a rabbit on the consult table. Um, a lot of what they're going to have to be thinking about is what they can't see. They're going to have to be asking a lot of questions, a lot of environmental questions about how the rabbit's kept, who it's kept with, what it's being fed. Those questions, it strikes me, are as important as anything else, aren't they? Yes, those ones are vitally important. Rabbits are social animals, so if you're taking away the social aspect, they become stressed. Unfortunately, when rabbits do become stressed, that's when they become quite poorly. If they've got a high level of cortisol going through their system, or if they get stressed to the point that their guts will actually close down, so we get the gut stasis again. So the rabbit's environment is really key. They should be kept socially with another rabbit at least. They should be kept as low to the ground as possible. So these big high hutches, they live in warrens normally in the wild. They're not hugely far removed from our, our wild ancestors. So we need to try and make their environment as natural as possible. So nice low hutches to the ground, somewhere dark where they can hide away, making sure that they're kept clean and dry, especially in the spring to autumn months. We also have the problem of fly strike where the rabbits um, actually get maggots on their skin and then it starts eating their skin away it becomes very quickly very fatal um, it's a very 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 nasty disease 
so we need to make sure that our husbandry is on top notch at that point. So I'm a big advocate for having rabbit clinics going on in my, my clinic. So a client can just come down to us and I'll just talk them through all the husbandry that's necessary to keep our rabbits happy and healthy and let them have a nice, long, happy life. And um, how has uh, knowledge around rabbit care um, evolved over the last 10, 15 years, would you say? I mean, because obviously you've got a packed stream later on this afternoon. There's a lot of vets interesting to hear the latest. How has that evolved and how has that made uh, keeping rabbits easier for people and um, treating rabbits that little bit easier? Well, I think... Since they've become the third most popular pet, it's no longer let's get a fluffy bunny for the child. They are very much more part of the family like our dogs and cats are nowadays. So everyone wants to try and look after them more. So it's really important that us as a profession are able to then provide that information to the clients. So there is research going on with our rabbits all the time to make sure that they're getting the best, best environments that they can be given. For me personally, the most important thing of our rabbits is their husbandry and making sure that they've got a happy life at home. And then we can then try and imitate that when they do have to come into the clinic and we can try and make sure that they're as comfortable in the clinic as possible but the best thing you can do for your your patients is to educate the clients and um, so encouraging our clients to come in and have a chat with us bring the children in if the rabbit has been bought for a child and have a chat with the whole family it doesn't matter it doesn't need to be just one person everyone can be involved with the care but it's really important that everyone's educated so in short they're, they're lovely creatures they're lovely pets and nothing to be scared of these rabbits then absolutely not they're brilliant and I got brought up with lots and lots of rabbits. I had loads of them as I was growing up and they are absolutely fantastic pets if you know what you're doing with them. They can be difficult to start off with, but as soon as you know that husbandry and that care and what you're expected and what they're expected to do, you'll be fine. They're lovely pets. That's brilliant. Thanks ever so much, Rachel. Thank you.